Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am the Sam. The bean is very present in today's video, so it's a little bit more scatterbrained than normal, but we still end up with an absolutely beautiful build, which you see on the screen in front of you. A large family estate, the Hacienda, was built around the same time and in a similar way to the Spanish colonial. If you're familiar with that Spanish colonial style or the Spanish revival, you're about to see a lot of similarities, but given that this home is essentially a step up, there will be more ornamentation and more house. The reddish glazed tile roofs are one of the most iconic features alongside the stucco walls that can be left their natural orangish color or painted white. These homes originated in the Mexico area, were heavily influenced by the Spanish, have been around since the 1600s, and are still a popular style among those in the right climate and the right tax bracket 400 years later. What a legacy. Wide rounded arches, indoor and outdoor living areas, corner fireplaces, colorful tiles, and wood and iron decorations are also key elements. Today's build is a little bit more on the rustic side, so we don't get super heavy into decoration, but as always, reference images and also some interior images are all linked in the Pinterest board in the description down below, so I highly recommend checking that out if you're trying to go a little bit more on the fancy side. At least one courtyard area toward the center of the home is essential and can be decorated with tiles, plants, and even fountains. They would also have some way of cooking and eating outside. Today, that's generally a sick grilling setup. Windows could be squared or rounded, but will have wooden or wood-looking frames, and original open windows have been replaced with glass-paned windows. While the original style favors small windows for temperature regulation, more contemporary constructions and remodels have taken advantage of insulation advancements and replaced them with huge windows to take full advantage of the sun and scenery. Greek style pillars can be used, either separate or sculpted into the adobe or plaster, or arches could be left undecorated. Moving inside, you'll once again find exposed wooden beams like most styles of this time and type, and you may even see the ends sticking out of the exterior walls. You could move room to room through interior arches, and the house was generally built around a primary courtyard, although you may see more than one. This home is typically one story, but could have a partial second story, floors would be wood or tile, and walls will typically be covered in white plaster. Now this is The Sims 4, and you can do whatever you want, but this is also built like a nerd, and my goal is to give you the best, most most authentic information I can. I am not an expert, but I am excited to build this with you today, so feel free to leave your questions, suggestions, and corrections in the comments down below, and let's get building. This build style was actually a request, so thank you so much Midnight for this idea. I'm super excited to build it with you guys today. Now you did specifically request a farm, however, because this build is so easily done with just the base game, I will be sticking with the base game, but as always, I'll point out different ways to use other packs if you have them that still support the build style, and that will include using Cottage Living to turn it into a farm, so don't worry, I will cover llamas as well as just normal base game stuff. The main premise of this shape is basically a courtyard surrounded by rectangles. The rectangles turn into the house. If you want the house bigger, add more rectangles or add a second story of rectangles. If you want the house to be smaller, remove some rectangles, replace it with a fence instead. That would be ideal if you're trying to do more of a farm or move this onto a smaller lot. And if you're just looking for an enormous multi-generational mansion, this is a great option. Let's start with a platform over here in this corner because it'll be the easiest to get the dimensions going. And we are going to build a seven by 10 little rectangle here. So seven by 10. Moving on to the main portion of the build, it'll be 10, just like this, and then move to the right, 12. This should cost 2,640, an easy way to check the dimensions. And lining up with this corner, you're going to go to the right until it's three tiles away from the edge of the lot, nice, which will be 1,320. Most of the bedrooms are going to be in this next rectangle, which is going to be again seven wide, but we are going to go down 12 tiles, which will be 1,860. Now, whenever you're going to be building a space that will have multiple other rooms in it, like bedrooms, you want to make sure that you have enough space for a hall as well as the bedrooms. So if this was only like four tiles wide, that'd be enough for bedrooms, but not enough for a hall as well. So that's why you want these rectangles to be a little bit wider, but they don't have to be super wide because it only needs one room and a, and a hall. Next up, start right here. We're going to do a five, just like that. And then to the left, 17. Now I am going to build on in this direction as well, but not before I discuss some of the uses of other packs. So for now, we're just going to add a couple of columns like this. So you should have a little column, four tiles, column three, and this is sort of going to be your gatehouse. Moving up, we're going to do a five by nine rectangle over here, and then line up with that corner and do an eight by 10. Now, if you're comfortable with using rounded walls, this is where we're going to do the round tower. If you're not, no worries, just sort of do a square version of the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this rounded room, the small one, place it right there and push it in on this side. So basically I wanna have one normal drywall wall and then the two tiles for the curve. I can copy and place that directly above itself and then I just need to grab one of these, size it down and slide it into place. So it should look like a nice round tower just like that. Next I'm going to add some balconies and sort of a secondary courtyard area. So grab your flat square. We're going to cover this area but we're actually going all the way to the edge just like this. 
and we're doing a second level below. However, this square will not fit, uh, so you can grab the flat L shape instead, stick that down there, turn it into a square, and then we'll bring this all around the edge basically making an external hallway. Now to finish closing in this shape, you can use a fence or a half wall. If you want to use a fence, I would recommend actually using the Spanish Revival wall. This is a perfect opportunity to use that wall, uh, but if that's a little bit too tall or too fancy for you, the rustic stone wall would work as well. And both of these have swatches that you can match pretty close um, in the uh, paint options. So that's great. The traditional color is going to be white, so we'll go ahead and start with that. And you can use that to draw all along the outside, like there, over here, and down and around to connect with that gatehouse. Now, I already told you that I'm going to be building here as well, but if you were trying to convert this sort of build into a farm and you needed some place to put your llamas or whatever, this would be a great place. You can grab your barn, slide it right in there, fits perfectly, uh, either facing this direction or this way. Of course, if you wanted to have a larger farm with more than maybe just one or two hobby animals, you could either place this on a larger lot, expand this, remove some of this, and just move the whole household into these two areas here. A lot of options, but again, this is a base game only, so I'm just not going to have that. Instead, I'm going to add an in-law suite. So I'm actually going to start in one tile right here and go to the left seven. You have about four tiles there, which will be turned into sort of a private courtyard. And then right here, I'm going to do a two by four room, which will be the bathroom. And we can add a little bedroom just like this. Grab another flat square and fill in this area for the private courtyard area. And there we go. The last thing you want to do is grab this half wall and place it right here. That's just going to separate our kitchen area a little bit better. It'll make more sense when we get there. And now let's add a few architectural details before we move up to roofing. I know this isn't a bay window because it's the wrong shape, but I don't remember what it's called. However, there are a lot of them in these home styles, so I'm going to put one here, which will be two tiles in from either side. And then moving this way, we'll go two tiles, draw a little guy, two tiles in from this side, draw a little guy, and you'll have about four tiles right there. If you really wanted to, you can make them wider. Not gonna mess with the build too much, that's just sort of a personal preference thing. I said move on to roofing, but I forgot that I need to do more than just this for the floor plan, so here we go again. Um, I'm going to draw a wall right here, and this whole space could be bedrooms, office space, movie room, rec room, ping pong, whatever. I just sort of left that open to be whatever you guys wanted it to be. So you can go ahead and start by just separating that two tile hallway. And we're going to do a five tile bedroom and a four tile bedroom. Next, take this little tower space and we're going to bring it down right here. So the end room is going to be three tiles wide and we're going to expand it this way, just one tile. This is going to sort of be a larger hallway before you move into the slightly smaller hallway for these two bedrooms. We can expand this to the left one tile, which will make a good size bedroom or er, bathroom <laughs> for all the children. And then over here, we're going to do our staircase and a sort of family bathroom. So we'll just do a little two tile section like this, split it up. This three tile area will be our staircase and this two by four will be the bathroom. Now, I am using short wall height. However, if you are using medium wall height, which is also totally fine, again, that's really a personal preference thing, you will have to resize this to be four tiles wide in order for the stairs to fit properly, um, but I'll be going with three tiles. We're going to put another wall over here, so we're going to just move in from this side five tiles, go down four to the left one, and then down six. Select this area and click this arrow to raise that platform level one. That'll be a nice little detail. It'll bring it up level with what will be an outdoor kitchen over here and separate it from the rest of the courtyard. Here's a quick look at that floor plan. So you should be looking something like this right now. And then upstairs, the first thing I'm going to do is just remove all of these walls so that I can build them back better. First, this is going to be a bathroom with a bedroom right off the side here. This is quite a large bedroom and it's the second largest bedroom um, and the only other bedroom that has an ensuite in this particular design. Next, I'm going to draw a wall here and here. So this is almost a square, except instead of going this way, we're gonna go this way two tiles and then bring it back down to connect. This will be the ensuite for the main bedroom. And to close that off, we'll just put a wall right here. So you should have at this point, a very nice large bedroom with a large ensuite, a slightly smaller, but still very large bedroom with an ensuite here, two more bathrooms and three bedrooms on the main level, as well as either a little farm area, a gym, um, or an in-law suite if you're following along exactly over here. Phew. All right, don't worry, we're nowhere near done. Uh, next up, we're going to move up to the roof and I'm going to start with the gatehouse. Once again, go ahead and grab a platform and I'm going to start right here on this corner and bring it across to this corner. Now, if you click here, you can use the platform arrows to raise it up four, which will be a total of five 
levels of thickness, I don't know what the right words are, um, which is going to be approximately the same as the width of this drywall sheet. Next, take the fifth largest half wall, because that's how they count up, and we're going to do a square around a rectangle, I guess. A rectangle around the whole perimeter. This will allow our paint swatches to match up um, better than if we just used a sort of trim, and we can also do two additional lines like this. Those additional lines are there so that we can grab the jutting exterior trim. I'm going to be going with a brown for my accent color today and place it right on that middle platform. Now it'll just show right here above the door, which is where we want it. And if we didn't have these additional walls, it would do that, which we don't want. Now, while we are here, um, I did that because there aren't any really good base game spandrels that I wanted to use here. Um, this is probably the best option and it's just not quite right. Now, that being said, a really great spandrel option would actually be the vampires one if you have this pack because that specific spindle pattern was actually really common in these builds, um, specifically in the windows before they added glass pane windows. Now, you and I, of course, very much appreciate glass pane windows, but if you still want some of that style, that rustic spindle look, this is a great way to get it if you have this pack. Now, up here, we actually get to use one of the roof items that I don't think I've ever used in a build before, this guy. Now, I am using this specifically because it is going to give us the look of having a roof higher than some of the other roofs. It's gonna look cool, basically. And again, this comes in pretty much the same colors as those fences, so we can once again get some white. And what I'm gonna do with this is hold shift and place a whole bunch of them back to back to back to back to back or front to back. Make sure that you turn the last one around and there you go. They should place, even if you have move objects off, I had move objects on, so I wanted to check that, but even if you have move objects off, they should all place. Now you don't have to do this, you could just leave it flat, but if you do choose to do this, then when you move on to adding the rest of the roof, which will be primarily um, these half-hipped roof pieces, pitched down to be just about level with the top of that half wall. You can bring the eaves out one or not. A stylistic decision depends on you. I prefer having eaves, grab that trim, some red tiles and you see how this roof just like it looks like a roof that's above the rest of the roofs that's really nice especially since we can't actually build roofs um, on other other wall heights all right so now from here we're just going to do basically the auto roof method um, which if you haven't seen my video on recommend blah 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 we're just going to copy this exact same piece of roof line it up and resize it to fit the entire rest of the build this is what that first floor should look like. The second story will be a little bit different. We actually want to use a fully hip roof, but we want to make sure it's the right pitch. So you can do that by setting it sort of on the corner, opening your other roof pieces and just pitching it down until it lines up. Which is gonna be there. And then before you lose it, move it so that you can cover this area of your build. Make sure you match up that roof trim and texture, which is pretty much exclusively going to be the uh, red shingles. I'm going to copy and place this here. Make sure that it lines up properly. Should look like that. And now we need a little circle. I'm going to grab one of these guys and rotate it so that the gabled portion is facing out and resize it so that it fits the width here of my uh, tower. So that when I grab a circular roof and size it up, it'll be a lot easier to line that pitch up. I prefer going all the way down and then bringing it up until it lines up. Bring out those eaves, add the trim, add the texture, and it's a tower roof. There are a couple more roof pieces to add. I'm going to take another one of those very same half gable roof pieces and I'm going to put it in two tiles away from the edge on either side here so that I can bring this down. And once again, it's going to look like it is a slightly different sort of height of roof. Now, if you happen to really not like how these two pieces look together, um, you can just replace this with that same half hip roof piece, making sure, of course, all the eaves are appropriate. So that will look like that instead. Either one is fine. Again, I just like being able to add roofs that look like they're at different heights. That's kind of something apparently I'm into right now. The next set of fun roofing we get to do is for sort of a covered walkway around here. I'm going to take a half gabled roof piece and once again be a little bit sneaky and resize it so that it is one tile away and it's kind of floating out here. Drop the pitch all the way down, bring it up one. If you feel like this is just too complicated, no worries, your build will not be lacking if you do not have this. And from here, you're gonna hold shift and extend this top eave one. It's going to look like it will line up, but this way when we add a fence around here, when we get to that part, it's not going to remove the fence, um, which you know is an issue. From here, we will copy, rotate, and place here. Now I did notice I have this issue with the curved walls. I know, surprise, surprise, um, where it's sort of like, there's this line here. Uh, you can fix that by pulling the roof away and then once again holding shift to pull the eave out like that. So it looks like it's all the way over, 
but it's not, it's being sneaky. You can clean these edges up by holding shift again and pushing those eaves back. We're going to grab a half hip truth piece and we're going to line it up so that this corner is going to match up with these corners. Now when everything's the same color, it looks great. We can go ahead and add a fence up here. You pretty much have three options up here. You can either go with that stone wall look again or a half wall, or you can grab something very rustic and wooden um, and spindled, again, vampires pulling through with this guy, or you can go for something with some wrought iron work. I'm going to go with that one and use the atomic fence. I'm gonna draw that along here. Oh, okay, well, hey, look, this is gonna show you what I was talking about, uh, where if the roof is meeting up with the fence, it will delete it but you can fix that by pushing this back, holding shift and pulling that eave out. And now our fence is showing again, huzzah. Now here really quick, draw a little fence right across there, lining up with the wall below so that you can grab the inlaid exterior trim in a dark brown and apply it right there. This way, when you delete the fence, it just shows up where you want it to, a similar trick to what we used over here. I'm gonna grab some stairs, nice dark brown stair. And here's what you wanna do. You wanna place your stair so that the top is going to the left Grab this goofy looking guy and just pull it down so that you have a switch back. Go ahead and move these stairs inside. They should place perfectly right here and they'll fit right in that little sort of alcove that we made earlier. You can put a half wall or a fence right there uh, for aesthetics. And I think we can move on to paint now. Again, traditionally, you're going to want to go with white. Um, however, leaving it more unfinished with a beige or orangish stucco color is totally legit as well. Whatever color you prefer, I recommend going with the stucco on you. That is the best texture. And I'm gonna be going with, I think this white is gonna be the best one. I'm just gonna go through and hold shift and paint all of my rooms, the whole house, all the same color. Now you don't have to paint the inside the exact same. Uh, however, it is pretty traditional to be either stucco or a slightly more smooth plaster painted white. Now we can move on to talking about doors and windows. I think if I switch the lighting up, not only does this look loads better, uh, but we can see the doors and windows much more easily. So you can see this white doesn't quite match up, um, but it is a very similar texture. So how finicky you want to be with that is totally up to you. But let's talk about this door Whoa, first. Baby. Oh. Strawberries are apparently suddenly very important. Let's talk about this door. If you're going with a medium wall height, you could probably use this, um, sorry, I have a kid climbing on me and talking about random fruit. Uh, so I've got this door, which would be great. This one could be really good as well, uh, but nothing too fancy, really. And it could be arched or not. You could honestly even just go with arches here but I'm going to use this mega double door and actually put windows on either side. Now windows can be arched or not, but you're going to want to stick with something rustic and wooden. Loads and loads of options, but if you're just sticking with the base game like me, basically the mega collection. So I'm gonna grab this guy and by holding alt, I can slide him along the ground until he's right in the middle where I want him just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the back and use that same door one last time, straight across <laughs> to be the main, um, the main front door of the house. I'm going to stick with the mega collection. It is just so good for styles like this to do all the doors heading to the outside. So I'll put one right here. I'm going to put some in the center of these bedrooms as well so that they can escape and right in the middle of this wall. This is going to pair really well with these windows, the taller mega windows, which you can place along like that. Again, you could go with arched if you wanted to. I'm going to stick with the rectangles. I'm going to put a couple of those in this bedroom as well. And then at the front of the house like that. This is going to be my kitchen, so I don't really want to put any other windows there, but I will put a couple here, and I'll put one upstairs here, and a few more along the wall, and use some more of these guys as well. You can line up these windows if you want to use those, and for the bathrooms, I'm going to be using, well, and the other rooms, um, I'll be using a combination of these windows and these windows. So I'll take one of these and put it right here and down here. Those are the bathroom windows. These are also what you're going to have to use for the tower because that's what's going to place. Now you'll notice that these don't technically fit, uh, but if you turn on move objects, which you do by opening up your little cheat bar and then typing bb dot move objects, you can actually place them. Do they place perfectly? Eh, uh, but they work okay. And I'm going to line those same windows up down below. Moving back downstairs, I'm going to use a couple of these windows side by side and another set of these doors. We can put a window here. And I'm going to put a larger one facing into the private courtyard and a couple of these smaller ones facing out this way, just for privacy, you know? You can add a few more of these anywhere you feel like your build might be missing a little something to add some fun details. I think that's it for the windows. Um, here's a quick look at the second story so you can check and see if you like that window placement or not. Change it if you don't. It's a little harder to get all in one frame, 
Um, but here is the first floor. Hello! Oh Next we can talk about interior doors. Leading off the gatehouse area, I'm going to use this one. Just because it kind of looks like an exterior door, but it's also pretty small. And then for the rest of the house, if you have more rustic style doors, again, cottage living, coming in for the win, seasons would be really nice. Uh, you can definitely use those, but for all my base game buddies, I'm just going to stick with a simple single panel door in a nice wood swatch. So in this area of the house, I'm going to place a door here and here. This is strategic, those do have to go there, but for the bedrooms, whatever works. Bathroom, whatever. This bedroom, whatever. This bathroom, I would put it here um, just because that leaves this wall free for a fireplace or whatever else you may like. And same thing goes for upstairs. I'm going to put a door here and here and here and here, but do what works for you. For flooring, you can go with any combination of sort of terracotta color, terracotta color tiles um, or dark wooden floorboards as you prefer. I'm going to be going with just some simple hardwood in most of my rooms, but I will be using some tile in the bathrooms, the kitchen and dining space, and this area right here and over here. Now, if you are working with the rounded walls, they only let you place the flooring in the sort of default direction. So for that reason, I will be sticking with tiles here as well, even though I'll be using wood everywhere else. And one thing that I did mention in the intro that we will not necessarily be doing in this build that is really common in this build style is exposed beams. Um, it wasn't going to work out super well. It was just like gonna look weird, it's gonna be difficult to execute. However, if that is something that you'd like to add to your builds, I did explain it quite thoroughly in the Spanish Revival build video, so I highly recommend checking that out if you want to add that to any of your builds. It just wasn't going to make sense for this particular build on this particular day. Forgot to go through and add the interior arches, so let's do that. I'm going to use the arch with the keystone because I'm using a short wall height. Ideally, I would use the mission style arch. However, this one is not wide enough and I'm not using the medium wall height. So this one is a bit more accurate to the style, but for the whole like size and whatever reasons, I'll be going with this one. And I want to place that going into the halls and place three side by side right here, leading into the dining space. Now, if you want to add a platform trim, I'm going to go with this um, sort of tile one. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else or if I'm just distracted because I have a small child trying to help. I don't know. About now is the time where I will take you aside and walk you through the elements of the shell that really make this style this style. So let's go ahead and take a mini tour. Again, if you just look at the most basic shape of this build style, it's going to be a collection of rectangles around another rectangle. So you'll have some sort of centralized courtyard um, surrounded on at least two sides by building. In this case, it's surrounded on three. We could go as far as four. And then the build itself will be one story with maybe some two story areas. There will sort of be a gatehouse or some sort of large prominent entrance, um, whether it's a full-on gatehouse or if it's just a really big fancy standalone gate. You'll often see windows sticking out like this, which is fun, and you're pretty much always going to see a red tile roof that is going to be quite low sloped and very few open faces. This particular roof shape isn't necessarily a thing, I just thought it worked well for this build, and I think those windows are too high. If you wanted to take this in a more contemporary direction, a great way to do that would be pretty much just update the windows. Um, that would be a great start and maybe replace a couple of the roof portions with some flat platform roof, but for the most part, just updating the windows is going to bring this a long way in the contemporary direction because it is already so smooth and white on the outside, um, which is very common. A lot of contemporary builds have a lot of concrete exterior or natural lumber materials, but you're not going to see natural lumber or stone generally on the exterior of these. Maybe some stone depending on the region. We have two kitchens to furnish today, so let's start with the smaller one. Appliances and things really just depends on the overall vibe you're going for for the build. I'm just going to stick with some pretty basic stuff, but I do want some wooden cabinets. so. I'm going to do that. Using the gear icon, I can place a corner cabinet here, and then a standard cabinet, and an end cabinet. My stove in, and a sink, and adorable. While we're here, we can furnish this little bathroom, which has plenty of room for a tub or a tub shower combo, a toilet, a sink, and anything else you may need. Now I'm going to show you how I had this furnished when I put it together, just because I feel like it might be helpful because um, it is a bit of a small space, but I did have a nice big bedroom so that I could have an office space in there as well if I wanted to, right? Something like this. So long as you have at least a half tile of space, your sims can walk. Um, so this side of the bed is totally accessible through normal means, but also as of right now, 
the scooching glitch is not happening. You can't actually scooch across the bed. So that's one way to organize the sort of bedroom. And then out here, I thought it'd be cute to sort of put the dining table in this little nook, grab a couple of chairs, adorable. And then the living room works really, really well if you just grab a little chair, maybe a little fireplace, maybe a television, maybe a table. Uh, but basically that's why I put the doors where they are. So there's that. Now for the bigger kitchen, I don't really want to block this window, so I'm going to start the kitchen one tile in. Uh, this would be a good place to put like a trash can or something though. I'm going to use those same wooden cabinets because I like them. Place one here, skip a space for the stove and go across with some of these cabinets to fill in that little nook. And I'm also going to add an island. So I'm gonna grab this and the two end pieces and place them side by side like this. I think that having that little island in the kitchen fills it up the rest of the way. If you want to add some upper cabinets, I recommend pressing the F5 key since you are placing on a platform, it's going to screw with it a little bit. Um, but this way, and again, you can use a little gear icon. Uh, you can get those cabinets placing across your wall fairly well. Don't prove me wrong. There we go. So there are some cabinets. And then you have plenty of space for a gigantic dining table over here. Space for the whole family. And it kind of kind of looks cool through the arches there, you know? After that, it's just bathrooms. If I was doing laundry, I'd probably put it in this bathroom here, but since I'm not, I am just going to go ahead and grab another shower tub combo because they're really handy. Sink, toilet, mirror, all that stuff, and it's a bathroom. Same thing, different space over here. Although if you wanted to, it would be really easy to get a double vanity all the way across here. I'll have to scooch that window up a touch, but that's okay. A couple of sinks, a nice mirror cabinet, some decorations, and it's a bathroom, woo! I do apologize that this is feeling a bit rushed. I'm on a bit of a time crunch uh, to get this recorded right now, which is a bit unfortunate. But again, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments how much of this is an issue, how much of it I don't actually have to worry about. Also, toilet paper. Now for this bathroom, which I swear I put lights in, but it still feels super dark, I thought that it'd be super fun to put a claw foot tub over here, like sort of in the in the windows, you know, sort of stand alone. And you still have room for a shower, a toilet, sink over here, and why are the lights, are the lights doing anything? They're doing something, just not much. Oh, there we go. Okay, it was just bugging out. Yay, now we can see. And before we move on to landscaping, of course, now is the time to like the video if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe um, if you want to see more builds like this. Some of them are slightly more chaotic than others, but hey, that's just the name of the game. And don't forget to leave your questions, suggestions, and corrections in the comments down below. So to start the landscaping, I am actually going to move this whole house up onto a hill. And the easiest way to do that is just build your house. Don't even worry about it. And then use this arrow inside your room to raise up the whole foundation. So I'm gonna go up three. And then from there, to actually get the hill, grab the little shovel thing over here. This flattened terrain tool, not this one. Grab this one and start inside your house. By starting inside your house, that is the level the foundation is going to set to. Or sorry, not the foundation, the terrain, and it will cover the foundation. That's what I'm trying to say. So start inside the house, draw all around. Now from here, I am going to draw a little path. Whether I keep this path or not is irrelevant, but by painting a path here, that will help me use the smoothing tool. Go ahead and make that soft and slow to get this part of the train sloping nicely up to the sort of door there. You might have to adjust by flattening a little bit here and there, but in the end, you should be able to walk pretty good, uh, just straight up there, and you can sculpt the rest of the train how you want. I'm going to bring out this area a little bit further on this side and leave it pushed in on this side. Grab my circle to make a little pond down here because I think it will be cute. To get the edges of your pond to look a little bit better, I like to add water first and then shape it out a little bit more. Um, and you can always go in with the smooth terrain tool as well until you get it roughly where you want it. And then any edges that still look kind of silly, you'll just put rocks over it. It'll be fine. But while we are here in terrain paint land, let's talk about what to do with our courtyard here. Now we could just leave it dirt if we wanted to, but that's not very chic of us. So let's look at some of our other options. Pretty much any sort of stone is going to do really, really well. Uh, base game, you could go with the desert river rock, which looks much more worn, or the desert pavers, which look a little bit more, um, like the grass isn't coming through quite yet. With other packs though, we've got these stones, which are pretty nice the flowery stones from the cottage pack. I'll be sticking with the desert pavers, of course, and I think technically for this to count as base game, I have to first erase these textures. Even if you paint over them, they still like exist, which is kind of annoying. But I'm going to just use this terrain paint to paint in all in here. 
and I'm going to bring down my, I said bring down, my brush size a bit to do the path up the front. Of course, we'll add some other train paint around the foundation and whatnot later, but if you want a fountain, now's a great time to add one. It's this tool right here, and I'm going to add one right sort of in the middle over here, about here. Click on the little log and the little fish to get fountains. I will actually be using a fish. And if you want the fountain trim, that's down here. Fountains are super duper common to have um, in courtyards of the Hacienda style, especially since they typically are uh, larger builds, um, expensive builds. People who have money can put fountains in, basically is what I'm saying. And over here, I would recommend doing some sort of outdoor kitchen. All of the stuff from that Desert Lux kit would be fantastic. But if you're just going with the base game, you can still get a pretty nice outdoor kitchen by placing a grill. And then taking the Vault Modular Island counters, and you'll place one standard island and then place the end ones like on either side. This is assuming you don't want a bar. If you want a bar, you can put that in as well. And since the base game doesn't really have any good outdoor sinks, you can put a little sink right in the middle there. Grab a trash can and a couple of bar stools. And you have a pretty decent little outdoor kitchen setup. Of course, over here, you could also add other sort of dining tables and whatnot. And I think we get to move on to plants now. Still feel like I'm missing something, but I think it's just been a crazy day. Out here, I'm going to add a couple of palm trees. Now there are the Washington palm and the desert fan palm. And I like using these uh, both at the same time because they're pretty much the same, but you can resize this one to be bigger for a significantly larger palm and this one to be smaller for sort of a mid-size and you get a huge range of palm trees, which is fantastic. If you're on PC, you just use the bracket keys to size up and size down. And the other plants that you're going to want to add will just be more sort of native desert plants. If you're building in this world in particular, we have the mesquite tree, the knotgrass grass, um, and this is technically a debug bush, but this one is pretty similar in its sort of shagginess, as well as these little oopsa daisies. Those are all great options for uh, this part of your landscape. So. I'm gonna place some daisies over here. And over here, I'm gonna grab some of the knotgrass grass, put a couple of these shrubs up closer to the house. Again, resizing for some variation and interest. You can add other desert plants around as you see fit. And I definitely recommend adding some rocks. As always, recolor the rock to sort of fit your surroundings. So in this case, we wanna use more of the red tone, but you can size these up to make pretty cool boulders and make it kind of look like you had to landscape around the boulders, you know? Once you have all of your plants the way that you like them, we'll go back in one more time with terrain paint to sort of paint under them. Usually I go for a dirt, a dirt texture, but because this is the desert, I'm just going to go with a darker sand instead. Still though, go with the mid-level softness and sort of one of the smaller round brushes and just sort of add a little bit of shading around where they may be plants. As they drop leaves and whatnot, they will turn into loam, which will just darken the soil, so that's what all that is about. Also, it still adds kind of like shading around your house, which is just nice. Um, it gives it a little bit more dimension. But I definitely do not go nearly as heavy with terrain paint when I am doing um, desert builds as I do when I'm building in grass. Now it looks like we do have some bits of foundation sticking out, and if you have that issue as well, you just grab the There For You foundation and plunk it down wherever you may see foundation sticking out. Or you can just click it random like this and hope that everything fixes. That's probably not a very professional method. Good thing I'm not a professional. So with all of that complete, let's take one last little tour around the Hacienda style, point out some of the key elements, what you can carry over into your own builds, what makes it distinct from other similar styles, all that jazz. Looking at the outside, unlike some of the other Mediterranean inspired styles we've done, you're not as likely to have a front courtyard, but the central courtyard is going to be much larger and you may still have some at the side or the back of the home or sort of nestled in here and there like we did over on this side. Overall, you're going to have a lot of flat faces with occasional protrusions for windows and a round tower is not uncommon. However, it is not necessary. What is happening over here? Oh, I know what happened. Okay, so hey, if you're having this issue, because the roof pieces were not technically touching the build, they did not rise up when we leveled, uh, when we brought up the level of the foundation. So I totally forgot that that was going to happen. Yes, so all you have to do to fix that is basically just put the pieces next to the house and then move them back to where they belong. Speaking of roof though, red clay tiles, pretty much the only way to go. And inside you're going to see a mix of hardwood floors and tiles. 
Newer homes or remodeled homes may have um, more decorative tile or other flooring and wall options, but for the most part, if you're trying to stick with traditional, you're going to go with some more rustic tile um, and you'll go with a whitewashed stucco exterior and interior. Technically, I used plaster, which is also totally fine. So plaster or stucco. Any sort of rectangles in your build that have other rooms in them that do not open directly out into the centralized courtyard will most likely have a hallway with a door leading out to the centralized courtyard. Um, it acts almost like a gigantic outdoor hallway, so you should be able to get everywhere through here as well as through the inside. And I believe that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me. I know that the bean came and helped a few times. Um, the recording was kind of done in a couple of pieces, but we got through it in the end. We built a beautiful home. I had a good time. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. If you're interested in learning more about similar styles, I'm going to provide a direct video link to the Spanish Revival, which I highly recommend if you like this one. Um, that is the build where we went more into those overhead beams and stuff like that. And if you just want more build styles and histories in general, totally check out the whole playlist, which I will also link here for you. Thank you again so much for building with me today. Thanks again to Midnight for this build idea, and I look forward to building with you again very, very soon. Bye!